Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. So why not bother with Philippines fixes? Um, reality is, you don't know what you're buying. Um, I've seen guys with 13A residency cards where they're not married to a Filipino, and I've said to them, um, what happens when somebody actually asks you where your wife is? Because you don't actually have one. And their view is, we'll cross that bridge when you come to it. Well, the answer is, uh, well, no, because you've just created a cycle of corruption. Um, because when that needs renewal, you'll have to do it again. Um, and it might not be so easy to do, which means that um, you may end up having to pay several years back pay in, in um, fines for the immigration. Um, but also, they give you the card. Now, that's the only bit of uh, paper that tells you that they actually did it. Um, do you really want it work that way? That this little bit of card that um, somebody that corrupt gave you? They, well, myself, I'll be like, well, hang on a minute. I don't know. This is even real. I could have popped down at the uh, corner shop and had somebody print it print on the ID machine. I don't know, but some expats do that. Um, for me, it just seems stupid. Um, but other people will pay extra uh, immigration offices, etc. You don't need to pay anything. The way you do it is a way very similar to what I did in Spain. I was in Spain last week, I had to do a um, padron, which is the um, electoral roll. So what I did is I turned around. Had to get there early, end up about eight o'clock in the morning. There was already about 40, 50 people in front of me. Got my ticket and then I went off and took photos of the area for an hour, come back, check what number I was at. Um, Realised that they hadn't even started yet because they opened at nine o'clock. People started getting tickets from seven. <laughs> so back out again, went round for another half hour, um, come back, still another 20 people, went out, had a cup of tea, talk with some of the locals, come back, and then just have the documents in it, and I was in and out in five minutes. Now, you may think, well, yeah, but I've got better things to do with my time. All this happens because you're encouraging corruption. When people know that people will pay to jump the queue, they slow the queue down. So what happens is something that could take five minutes becomes 45, because they know people will pay to get in and out in five minutes. But also bear in mind, if you're a politician connected with the political parties, not have a brother-in-law, whatever, in the immigration system, they just jump the queue anyway. Um, they're not paying for it either. It's just the fact that it's friends, family, and uh, connections. So it doesn't matter. You'll still be below the queue on them anyway. But any bit of corruption that you do, you're encouraging more corruption, which is why I say don't do it. But also, you don't know if they're giving you quality of service, you don't know if they've done it, you don't know if they um, done it properly, and ultimately, it's much easier to do, much better to do it yourself because there's a bit, you've got confidence in you've done it right, you've got confidence in the knowing that you didn't pay any bribes. Um, so from a conscious point of view, it could be a bit better as well. Um, so please, don't, don't use fixes, you don't need them. They're not helping you, they're helping themselves. All right, thanks for watching.